Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and you're about to experience an interview that I just had with Rich Froning and a couple of his teammates, Tasia and Kristen. Now, I got a chance to talk to them about why they picked Wadapalooza, how his training has been changing, his thoughts on the new season format, you know, what he likes, what he doesn't like, as well as the whole CrossFit Graceland thing he's building with Mayhem out in Cookville, Tennessee. Overall, it was a really interesting interview. It's a little bit of a, a longer piece, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys next time. Deal. Uh, I'm gonna give a quick clap just to sync everything up. Oh, better clap. There we go. It's a better clap. All right. So, uh, thanks again, by the way, guys, for taking the time to uh, to talk to me here right now. Um, you guys are are, you know, I'd say pretty well known. In, in the in the CrossFit Thanks. space, and you have uh you have your pick of the litter, I would assume, in terms of what competitions you're going to be going to and how you're going to be qualifying for the games, and you've picked uh, Wadapalooza as kind of your your shot. Um, it's early in the season, but what was it that you know went into that decision specifically? Yeah, I think with Wadapalooza, it's one of the first. I would say local-ish competitions that we could get to. Uh, we thought about going to D Dubai, uh, had some opportunities to go there, but I, I kind of outweighed everybody's decision and the fact that I have three small kids and being away from them in between Thanksgiving and Christmas would have been nearly impossible. So um, luckily these guys are, are super um, compromising and, and agreed with me and, and we're going to stay here and then go to one place. It's the game plan. So... so I guess let's let's step back a little bit because now we have we have this whole new game season, a, a, a style of competition and qualification that we haven't seen before for the games, but is similar to other professional sports. You know, does there ever cross your mind sort of what this means in the general scheme of things, or are you are you able to sort of as a team and as individuals just you know focus on the task at hand? Yeah, I think at first it was a little bit of a shock. Um, I mean, we all were kind of like, I, the the fact that we didn't really know the hard facts for some time and still from HQ, we don't really, I mean, you know, I guess enough that you need to know, but I would like to see a little bit, maybe a little bit more framework. I do like the fact that we're doing these qualifiers instead of regionals. I think it's pretty cool that they're doing that. Um, as far as the teams go, I wish there was just some rules to, hey, if you are on a team, can you still go individual? If you're an individual, can you go team? Like you, I, I wish that you had to at least declare which one you were going to do first. I'm all for um, more competition in the teams, and I think it'll grow the, the team side of things, but I just wish there were some rules to it, and we, we knew something that was going on, you know? Yeah, do, do you think that, the, uh, do you think that the, the lack of clarity is an advantage or a disadvantage for you guys? I personally, I think it's kind of a, an advantage for us because that's kind of how we train every day. Um, these guys at first um, were kind of thrown for a curveball uh, when they first came here thinking everything was like, you know, planned out. And we had these different macro cycles and mesocycles and programming and periodization and stuff. And um, they quickly learned that it's basically made up on the spot. So <laughs> uh, I think I think that helps. I think that helps us personally. Yeah, like, um, you know, it's it. When you, it comes to the games and comes to uh, being ready for things, I think, and I, I'm speaking for myself, but these guys can probably speak better to that. But um, I know a lot of people that come here that are very regimented and, and like to have structure don't don't thrive well here. The the training that you're bringing that up is it's really interesting to me because um, there's like a mythology around Rich Froning's training, right? It's almost bigger than you as a personality in the sport. Right to the point where even what's Rich doing was your first choice for how to how to sort of market your programming. Was that on purpose? Was because you you literally with that sort of like legend around your training have completely changed how everybody tries to train for the games in in a really fundamental way. I like to call myself a trendsetter or a trailblazer. <laughs> No, there's that's and that's what's so funny to me. I guess is that everybody thinks there's some mythical or like some deep you know thought that goes into i mean obviously having an exercise science background helps and growing growing with the sport has helped um i know what to expect i know well not you don't 
you never know what to expect, but you can kind of have some type of an idea um, of what to expect and, and how to be the most well-rounded as you can be. But I think it's funny that some people get so caught up in that where it's just like it's what creeps into my head, what these guys want to do, what we have done, what we haven't done, and uh, we just kind of make it up as we go. So was that for, for Chris and Tasia, was that kind of like a, a kind of kick in the pants or a wake-up call? It's like you walked into what a lot of people I assume would – it's kind of find as like a meat grinder with with sort of how all the training happens, right? Yeah, I think it, it definitely was a big change. It came from a very structured training schedule before. So it was an adjustment to say the least, but it's taught me a lot um, about myself as an athlete, as a person, and just like continuing to learn and change. Definitely. Yeah. It's kind of weird when you first get here, there's that adjustment phase and then um after a while you just kind of get used to like oh you know not worrying about what's going to come up because whatever it is you're going to do it anyway so it helps <laughs> I also, they still complain oh of course well <laughs> that's <laughs> that's part of the training the part of the training is to complain as good as, as, good as can. that's my that's my <laughs> if if you're not if you're not having that like groan of just oh my body like right as you're writing yeah. things on the board i don't know what i don't know if you're doing it right Pretty, pretty accurate. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I also, I think one of the most fascinating things that's happened over the past couple of years is this idea that you're kind of building this, I don't know what else to call it, but other than like CrossFit Graceland for, for all of <laughs> like the fitness world. So is there, was that on purpose? Were you trying to just sort of localize as much as possible or, or is it just kind of a stroke of luck and, and, and happenstance? You know, I, I really just think that um, people like being around other people that are like-minded, and this is a good uh, a good environment and a good community to um, push yourself. You know, a lot of us that have been here or live here, um, we get along well, but everybody likes to train, everybody likes to work hard, and I, I don't think it's, I was never like, hey, everybody come move to Cookville, it was just kind of, other than the team-wise, but, um, you know, like Tia and Shane and uh, Fraser and all them, it's just kind of like, I think... People like being around other people that, that want to push and, and they know that they can either learn things from or um, work with or, you know, you don't get old training by yourself all the time. So I think they've just kind of, that's what's kind of happened here, I guess. Is there like a grand plan here? Are you, are you going to be building out like this crazy facility? You're going to, are you going to put like a 10,000 person arena in your backyard or something? Yeah, you know, at first, no, we didn't really think about it. And then lately we've kind of been like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to have like a, you know, maybe some land with some, you know, like a, a barn or like a training facility and then some cabins or something where people can come hang out, um, train with people or you know, just watch or whatever it is. We've, there's no master plan yet, but we've, we've discussed that and thrown that out there. I think it'd be kind of cool to have. You know, I, I also like kind of I think the, the, the start of a lot of that seemed to be when you transitioned over to the team competition, you're able to recruit really talented individual athletes like this. And I don't think you've ever hidden the fact that you were literally recruiting athletes. You're just asking, hey, listen, would right. you be interested in being a part of this? We're going to win this thing. And right. you, know, you set the trend pretty early on. Obviously, there were different rules back then. There were rules that everyone had to be in the same place, which I think has, kind of works in your advantage, but now yeah. super teams aren't just allowed, they are almost required. And some of the groups that we're right. seeing, like, do you, do you pay attention to who these, these teams are that are coming together? I, I mean, honestly, um, all the teams that we've competed against over the last couple of years, there's always been at least two and three teams that were, I would consider super teams already. Um, now you're going to see, teams that are are more like don't stop last year with you know a lot of individual type athletes i don't really pay any attention to that um i know some of the other people around here are like oh did you hear about this team or did you hear about that team honestly uh i've cut my social media down to about 10 minutes a day so i don't have that's the last of my uh, worries is looking up that you know i want to see what's on barstool or something like that versus uh I, I live the CrossFit world every day. I don't need to see what's going on um, besides that. But I think you're going to see some really stiff competition, and I, I think it's it's good for the team side of things. Um, but that doesn't change anything that we do. We all get along really well. Um, I would take these guys over any super athletes or whatever you want to call these guys. Are uh, they're great and love to have them. Yeah, around, I mean so they're they're not we'll chumps right. either. I think that's a benefit, right? No. Yeah. yeah, but everybody wants to talk about these super teams where. Um, 
I feel like we're we're all right. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny you mentioned don't stop because uh, when we saw the roster of teams going to Wadapalooza, my my professional opinion was that uh, you guys are the runaway favorites and that there's a very small chance that people are going to take it away from you because you have the advantage of having trained together for years. And even if right. there are some differences between individual athletes and even if all the workouts aren't four person uh, events, it's still going to come down to the athletes who are most comfortable with the person next to them. Now, Travis Williams strongly disagreed and he, he texted me, <laughs> Yeah, imagine that he texted me and was, uh, and was very adamant that you guys would be a push to even take the podium. Is there, that sounds like a, tra- <laughs> you know, he, he... Did, uh, did they, they guarantee they win the game? I think they did year, guarantee right? they won the games last year. Uh, but I don't remember how that, how did that turn out? I don't think they won the game. I don't remember where they finished. Did they make the, were they? A... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting to me. I, I think one of the best parts about this super team thing is that it's building more opportunities to actually talk a little bit of smack, which has been yeah. lacking, you know, and I think you're probably pretty good at that. Uh, I, I usually let the actions speak louder than the words most of the time. And then after the fact, then I might talk a little bit. I just a subtle jab every once in a while. Now, do you find yourself, you know, competing differently knowing that maybe there are other opportunities down the line right when when it's just regionals there is just that one shot right you have to you have to make it through that one opportunity but now let's say things don't go your way in miami um you know you have another five months or six months of events uh is that something that even creeps into your mind like strategically or do you just just go out there and and try and win the thing yeah we haven't really game planned that um yet uh, the plan right now is to go to Wadapalooza. Um, it would be really nice to punch a ticket um, in January for the games. So we wouldn't have to worry about it for the next at least two or three months, not stressing about it. Uh, we are going to the Rogue Invitational for sure. Um, we've already confirmed with Rogue on that one. Um, the idea was just a kind of a warm-up competition to get ready for the games, hopefully. Um, but, you know, if something happens at Wadapalooza and we, we don't um, take the, the qualifying spot, then we'll definitely – uh, circle back up and kind of figure out what everybody's thinking and um, get to that point. I think another cool point uh, with this new season format is that it gives you guys the opportunity to really split your season up in a different way than you ever have before, right? It's been a lot of ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, starting with the open. And then, you know, those last few months leading into the games are usually pretty terrible for, for training. It's, it's, it's rough, right? It's a drag. Yeah, yeah. And so now you get to qualify really early in the season. Uh, you guys can have up to like six months to, to you know, maybe even come completely back down, take a little bit of an off season and a breather before getting back into training. Do you, have you thought that far ahead into how you're going to try and approach this? Yeah, we've thought about how nice that would be to be able to take at least, you know, because really we didn't, I mean, we had a probably, what, a month? ish off season before or after the games and once we found out all this was happening we were kind of like well crap in october we were starting to you know get back to it and um get get going again so we haven't really had an off season um not a true off season like you normally would right now you'd still be in kind of the middle of off season and starting january 1st you'd probably crank it up so um it's thrown everything off a little bit but it, it's good to shake it up and like you said it's such it used to be such a long season going from the open to regionals to the games that by the time the games came um that last three weeks were just uh, it was a drag yeah do you guys have uh do you guys have sort of ideas on how you're you know changing up your your training and your recovery this long into your career all three of you have been doing this for a while you know i think rich you've probably been the we're all, yeah, you've been yeah. you've probably been the longest competitive athlete in the space. Uh, I don't know, like ten plus years at the top of the game, right? So, you've you've learned a few things here and there. Is there is there any big differences between what you're doing now versus what you're doing back then? Um, no, I mean, yes and no. Um, it's definitely more varied. I'm not doing quite as much um, pure strength type stuff. I've just learned that I kind of have that base already set up, so. 
maybe moderate to heavy weights and Metcons doesn't beat me up quite as much as going to like a, a 90% or an 85% all the time. Um, adding swimming in has helped a ton because you can get a good, you know, good monostructural type workout in, but not beat your joints up. Um, we usually take one day. It's not super uh, hard on the joints. Uh, honestly, this is this last year is probably the best I've felt in four or five years other than this. If I get my left knee to feel back to normal after the meniscus thing, um, I, I feel great. But um, these guys might you know, we all do different things. They take a full rest day on Sunday. On Thursday, they also take a light day. They'll just swim and be done, where I'll do a little bit more on Thursday. Um, on Sunday, I'll work out where they, they take a full rest day. So I, I just feel better, and I've said it a million times in different interviews, but I feel better when I move. It's just the way my body is. So for for you guys, Chris and Tasia, you guys are both really accomplished athletes in the space. You know, you're not, you're not walking in uh, into mayhem as like rookies, right? but there's always something to learn. How did you guys have to change your approach to, to just sort of conform? I mean, I'm assuming it really was a more of a, you guys conforming as opposed to a compromise, right? Yeah, it was definitely conforming. I think, I feel like I'm pretty compromising. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think for me, it's just becoming more relaxed, just less uptight. (laughs) You just have to show up and wait to figure out what's going on, which now it's more of like a running joke between all of us we're here just like taking jabs at each other um but when you first get in it's team building it's team building yeah you want to put your best before and you want to do well and you just want to like abide by everything um but that's what helps i think about being here is we become close and we can actually just make fun of each other and have fun yeah for sure aside from just kind of not having much structure it's pretty easy you just go with the flow and you're good (laughs) is there is it i go do what i say yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah go with the flow just means yeah just follow rich's words uh is there a, <laughs> is there any moment where you kind of like pinch yourself or like just like double take when someone walks into the bar and you're like wait you have when did i like you have a key here like who like how did you even end up walking in here you know some sometimes like you know top end athletes will just sort of show up at your doorstep or or is it always sort of like this invite only like you know you know exactly who's showing up and when they're showing up situation uh we don't really have like a an invite only it's kind of like once you get one invite to the barn you just can come up whenever basically um, but the funny thing is, is we have elite athletes. So you got, I mean, Tia was in your training yesterday, but then I've got a group of guys that some I went to college with some guys that I've just become really good friends with. And they're, they're, they're they call it themselves the three o'clock wad doers group. And so they'll just come to the barn and they just, you know, they'll throw down and do whatever. And, um, it's, you know, so there's all different levels. And then you got my kids running around in between barbells and, uh, we're trying not to smack them. And, uh, it's, it's fun. It's a good time. That's awesome. Well, you know, guys, I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I really do appreciate you guys taking a little bit of time to, to talk to me here in the middle of the day. Uh, I am excited to watch you guys compete in Wadapalooza. I think it's going to be a really cool competition. And I think I'm I'm pretty excited to see uh, whether Travis is right or not. I feel like I feel like you guys are going to win it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Merry Christmas. Have a have a good new year. We'll see you guys in, in Miami. Take care. Take care, man. Bye.